Welcome on back to Skippers Today. I am going to go through my perfect fantasy baseball draft. It's pretty much just the guys I love and I want to draft this season through the first 10 rounds. I did a mock draft today. I took them round by round, so maybe these rounds are going to be off again, but that's where I took them from today. I'm going to go through those players. Once again, today's video is brought to you by So Rare MLB. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel, join the Discord. Let's get in round by round the players that I love. In round one, I got four guys that I love. Ronald Acuna Jr., Trey Turner, Kyle Tucker, and Bo Bichette. They all kind of have similar profiles, all can run, all can kind of do all five things that you need in your categories. You're playing in a classic categories league. Most of the picks in the first round are going to be good, but Ronald Acuna Jr. really has a chance to lead the league in stolen bases as well as hit for a ton of power, drive in a ton of runs, I mean, and just score runs himself. He's a great option. If you take him 1-1, you should be happy with that pick as well. Trey Turner building off a good world baseball classic, one of the more dynamic players in the league as well. Again, going to score a ton of runs, going to stole bases, going to steal bases, going to hit home runs. I mean, it's just what more can you want from these five tool guys? Kyle Tucker keeps moving up the draft boards with a little injury at the world baseball classic. It should be in a better lineup spot than last season as well. I'm just in on Kyle Tucker. He's going to steal the bases. He is going to hit for a decent average, drive in runs, score runs himself. He is a very good player. I keep he's kind of thinking he's underrated, but he keeps just shooting up draft forward. So you can't be underrated if you keep going up in ADP. And then finally, Boba Shett. I think he really can be a 30-30 guy this year. Again, everyone can steal bases. That's why I love them in this first round. Like Mookie Betts is another one that I like. Juan Soto is another one that I like. I'm not really against anyone in the first round, but you guys know me. I'm not going to take a pitcher in the first round. So these are the four guys that I love. The second round is almost more exciting than the first round because you don't have as much variability in the first round. You know who you're going to take, but the second round is a lot of fun. So my guys in the second round, Jordan Alvarez can go in the first round. I'm going to be back in on Mike Trout. I do not blame you for drafting Mike Trout on your teams because if he is healthy and if we can finally do that, he's very good chance he can win MVP. Corbin Burns, I like him being the first pitcher off the board. Um, he doesn't pl like he plays in a big bigger stadium than Garrett Cole does. Garrett Cole does get the strikeouts, but Corbin Burns is a similar strikeout guy as well. Paul Goldschmidt. In this mock draft, I had Pete Alonso going before Paul Goldschmidt. I'm out on that. I was a huge Pete Alonso fifth round last year. I think I'm out on Pete Alonso in the second round this season. And then Bobby Witt Jr., who has the profile of a lot of the guys I like in the first round and is the most likely, I think, of these guys to really take a big step up the next season and be a first round guy next year. Going to the third round, I like Aaron Nola, Sandy Alcantara, Austin Riley, Jet Chisholm, and Brandon Woodruff. I think this is the last one where I have this many guys that I love in a round. Aaron Nola has just been marker of consistency even with some struggles last season. Again, he went 11-13. and 13. Those numbers don't seem great to someone who doesn't look at the underlying stats. His FIP, XFIP were really, really good. Sandy Alcantara, I, I mean, I guess you can see that regression would come for a guy who was pretty much unhittable last season. But again, start of the spring. Last start, we had Luis Arias mic'd up the whole time and just Sandy Alcantara just mowing down like eight strikeouts, I believe. Incredible. Austin Riley, potentially underrated as well. Third round guy, he just hits. It's all he does. He's in an awesome Braves lineup, ton of protection, but he has a chance to drive guys in, do a lot of damage himself. Jazz Chisholm has the first round profile of a guy who's going to steal the bases, hit the home runs. He's talking a lot about the guys for the fans to see, hey, finally, if I get a full season, I'm going to see what you guys say. I'm ready to see what Jazz Chisholm can do. The swing decisions, poor the first season, okay the second year. If he can make way better swing decisions this season, he is an er easy early first round talent and Brandon Woodruff which if you go two hitters I'm fine with taking the first pitcher off the board for your fantasy baseball teams again I like the two Brewers pitchers so Brandon Woodruff another guy I like in the third fourth round Dylan Cease Corey Seager Matt Olson and Luis Robert I haven't talked too much about Luis Robert a lot of people like the White Sox to be really good this year I don't know where I'm at with that I think I like the twins to win that division personally but that's a betting man that I am plus 200s better than whatever the White Sox odds are probably going to be Matt Olson he's just torn up the spring again spring training stats don't really matter but most people who win MVP tear up spring training Matt Olson's kind of that guy Corey Seager as well he lost a ton of hits to the shift last season I think he's in for a big big season and then Dylan sees he had a huge uh, scoreless inning streak in the middle of last season. He gets the strikeouts. If you believe the White Sox are going to be good, Dylan Cease could get a lot of wins this season. It should be very valuable in fantasy baseball. So those are my round four guys. Fifth round starting to thin out a little bit more. My three guys I like, Kyle Schwarber, Framber Valdez, and then Kevin Gosman. Kevin Gosman, I'm going to put a ticket on to win the AL Cy Young. He gets so many swing misses out of the zone. 
can't really get hurt if you're going to swing at pitches that are out of the zone, right? Especially on a splitter, that's going to end up in the dirt. If you're hitting that pitch, it's going straight in the ground, ground ball. You have a pretty good left side of the infield. Bo Bichette, maybe not so good with the glove, but you got Matt Chapman to make the plays. And the second base defense should also be great. And then Vladdy, gold glove, you can say what you want about the gold glove, but that is a pretty good infield defense for Kevin Gosman. Framber Valdez is a guy who's kind of broken out as well. He is going to be on a good Astros team, so wins very plentiful for an Astros pitcher. He's going to keep balls in the field. I'm a good, I'm good for what Framber Valdez is going to do for me. I trust him a lot, and I'm going to take him on most of my teams. And then Kyle Schwarber, if he's going to hit one or two, he's going to have a chance of driving some guys. He's going to get driven in himself. He stole a surprising amount of bases last season. Uh, as long as he can hit for a little bit better average, he is going to outperform this fifth round ADP almost guaranteed. Today's video is brought to you by So Rare MLB. On So Rare MLB, you can build a fantasy baseball dynasty and win amazing rewards with So Rare's revolutionary fantasy MLB game. This game transforms baseball fans into general managers. Visit the marketplace to buy, sell, and trade digital player cards to boost your team and progress to advanced competitions with once in a lifetime prizes like merch, game tickets, and VIP packages. So Rare is a free to play daily fantasy game where you score points based on the real life performance of the players in your lineup. When you first sign up for So Rare MLB, you'll get to draft 10 common cards to begin your collection. You'll need to draft three starters, a relief pitcher, two corner infielders, two middle infielders, and two outfielders. You're able to enter into modified points league based tournaments for each game week where you're able to win prizes determined by how many points your roster scores. So Rare MLB uses a bi-weekly tournament schedule with each game week spanning a three to four day cycle. At the end of the game week, if your team performed well enough in your tournaments, you'll earn rewards in the form of new So Rare MLB cards to add to your collection and strengthen your team for the next tournament. Make sure you click the link in our bio to start playing So Rare MLB today. You go to round six, you have an Astros player and a Blue Jays player again, Christian Javier. I might almost like him more than Framber Valdez just because of what he can do. I don't know if the innings are going to be the same. Valdez can rack him up, but Christian Javier's numbers were incredible last season. I took him at, I think it was my second guy. I went Cease and then Christian Javier as my two pitchers in a home league that I did this week. And then George Springer again. It's the question mark is the health. It's frustrating that you have to deal with that with some of these guys again, like Mike Trout, but you know, the skill is there with George Springer. The lineup is there. He's going to hit one when he plays for the Blue Jays. So I have no problems taking George Springer in the sixth round. Seventh round, we have one guy, ton of upside. And then a couple, a couple older guys going to go Jose Abreu as the old guy. I think he was very unlucky last season. The BABIP was low. He goes into a great Astros lineup, has the ability to just drive a bunch of people in. He's way better than Yuli Gurriel ever will be. So I think Jose Abreu, you can figure some things out. Be a really, really good option at the first base position this season. Brian Reynolds, he's allowed to just cook and do whatever he wants in Pittsburgh. I took the chance on him last season. Kind of hurt me in the first couple of months of the season, but he kind of figured it out by the end. The, the numbers look good. Again, a guy who can hit for some power and steal some bases. And then Corbin Carroll, I really think, has a chance to lead the league in stolen bases. I don't want to go my whole fantasy drafts on any one of my teams without Corbin Carroll. So as, le as long as I get one share, two shares of Corbin Carroll throughout fantasy baseball, I'm gonna be happy. I do not wanna see him. I'm kinda of big on the D-backs this season. We were talking about their win totals today on the lines at lunch show on Twitch. I think the D-backs can be scare kinda of scary good. Maybe even sneak in a playoff spot. So Corbin Carroll, and I like these guys in round seven. Round eight, we have Camilo Duvall, Vinny Pasquantino, Gunnar Henderson, and Byron Buxton. Buxton, again, the numbers were crazy. The average was not there, but the amount of home runs he hit for as few games as he played was off the charts. I am a Byron Buxton fan. I I know how good Byron Buxton will be if he gets to play a full season. If they play him at DH, that'll be nice. I don't care about the war he'll have because he's not playing in the outfield, but I am I like Byron Buxton. I think the profile is really good. We cut down on some swing and miss stuff. We get the home runs again. He's going to be a really good option. Gunnar Henderson, guy I think we like to break out. I'm down on the Orioles. I don't think they hit their over win total at 77 and a half, but I think Adley Rutschman and Gunnar Henderson are just going to be able to rain freely and just hit as much as they want, top of the lineup, ton of volume, and a ton of production. Vinny Pasquantino, really similar swing decisions to, a, to Freddie Freeman. I mean, as a guy who's pretty young, if you are not chasing balls out of the zone, you're swinging at pitches in the zone and you're making hard contact when those pitches are in the zone, it is a very good recipe for success. He mashed while he was in the minors. The power didn't really show in the majors last season, but I think it'll, I think it'll come. And then Camille Duvall, first reliever I believe we have here, and I believe in his arm talent for sure. The Giants, I'm, I, 
I'm an East Coast guy. I don't see much of the Giants or know much about them. So I don't really know how that's going to go. But in saves plus holds, he's going to be awesome for sure. Uh, he's not going to get many holds because he's going to be the closer. But I like him just as one of the best overall relievers in the game this season. Round nine, three guys, Wander Franco, Nathaniel Lowe, and Carlos Correa. Carlos Correa being in the ninth round really shocks me. Uh, is it the injury concerns that the doctors didn't like? And then the twins doctor said those injury concerns are totally fine. I guess that's where you kind of end up here. But the production does not match the ADP. So Carlos Correa, I like him in the ninth round. Nathaniel Lowe, if you don't get Vinny Pasquantino and you're still looking for a first baseman, I think it's a perfect spot for you to take him in the ninth round. Just absolutely crushed. His career, ex Woba, is just a steady scale of just keep going up and up. And then Wander Franco, kind of question marks with health with him, but it's not a question mark of talent at all. When he's on the field, as long as we can get some more home run numbers from Wander Franco, easily outperforms his ninth round ADP. Here we go to the tenth round. I have four guys that I like. Yohan Duran, George Kirby, Jeffrey Springs, Taylor Ward. Yohan Duran, Safe plus hold leagues definitely needs to go like top. He's one of the best guys you're going to have because you don't have him as your closer right now. Jorge Lopez is slotted as a closer, I believe, but you'll have saves plus holds. So if he's the eighth inning guy, we're holding leads. We are fine with that. You know, Duran, one of the more talented arms in the game of baseball. George Kirby, a guy that I like a lot, talked about him in undervalued pitchers, adding a new pitch, needs some swing and miss on the secondaries, but the fastball is really good. Keep it in the yard. George Kirby's going to be a really good option this season. Jeffrey Springs, a guy I kind of like. We talked about his spring training stats in one of the earlier videos last week. Uh, he's been able to get a tough swing and miss again. I know he's a 30-year-old. He's just – the Rays find ways to get really good guys who can get people out in a multi mu – that's not even a word, in just a ton of different ways. Um, and then Taylor Ward, three home runs in spring so far. He looks really good. He's going to hit probably one in that Angels lineup. So – you have a piece of that. I think the Angels are going to be a lot better this season. Um, but I like Taylor Ward in the 10th round as well. So these are my guys in the top 10 rounds that I would like as a perfect fantasy baseball draft. No worries if you guys didn't get a bunch of these guys in your drafts. But that's kind of who I'm hanging my hat on in the first 10 rounds. Let me know who you guys are taking. Do not forget to subscribe to the video. Join the Discord. Thank you to So Rare MLB, and I will see you guys tomorrow.